Hi, I'm Leon, the founder of Audio Advice. This video is an overview of a new turntable from Cambridge Audio, the Alva ST turntable. The ST bears a striking resemblance to the recently introduced Alva TT V2. If your history memory is up to speed, you might recall the first phonograph was made by Thomas Alva Edison. Those clever British pulled his middle name from their new line of turntables. The first Alva came out in 2019 and received great critical acclaim from all over the world. This was a pretty interesting accomplishment as Cambridge Audio is not exactly known for turntables, but they've been successful for over 50 years producing great sounding products for the money. They have kept up a high level of innovation and success by sticking to their roots since 1968. London-based Cambridge Audio was the very first audio company to make an integrated amplifier using a Toradial-type transformer. This amp also had a very simple circuit design. To this day, their engineers strive to keep things very simple and spend time evaluating both with measurements and listening tests the components that go into their circuitry. They also have a great reference point for what live music sounds like as every Friday afternoon their London office hosts a live musical performance. I don't know for another audio company in the world that goes to that level to keep everyone focused on the sound we all strive for in our systems at home. Just like its bigger brother, the Alva TTV2, the Alva ST has a built-in moving magnet phono preamp and what is a pretty cool yet somewhat controversial feature for a turntable, a Bluetooth audio transmitter. Now let's take a look at the new Alva ST and talk about how it compares to the more expensive Alva TTV2. The Alva ST could be the twin brother of the more expensive Alva TTV2. They actually look almost identical and the look itself is sleek and contemporary. The CX line from Cambridge Audio has a smaller bottom portion that makes the unit look like it's floating, which you'll also find on the Alva ST. The lower part of the plant is a matte dark gray color with a solid aluminum plate on the top. The power and speed control buttons are on the left side while the right side has the Cambridge logo embedded into the top. Most high performance turntables are manual and the Alva ST follows suit. This means you need to lower the tone arm to start things playing and then raise it when the record ends. You use the cueing lever for both of those functions. The ST shares the exact same tone arm as the TTV2. It has tracking force and anti-skate settings but there is no azimuth or tone arm height adjustment. The Alva ST has a simple yet solid look that makes you feel like it will not be hard to set up and should last for a very long time. It just feels very well made to the touch. It's also quite beefy, weighing in at over 16 pounds. The included cables to connect it up to your system are not the pure giveaway type, but nicely done and will probably not need to be upgraded. Finally, like almost all of their products, and we wish everyone did this, the connections are all printed from both the right side up and upside down, so you can read them when you lean over the top. The Alva ST has four feet with some damping tech to help reduce resonance and make their way into the turntable plinth. The beefy plinth is made from MDF, then has a layer of EVA. This is short for Extreme Vibration Attenuation and is a new type of pad with far more anti-vibration properties than most materials. The one millimeter solid aluminum top plate sits on top of the EVA pad. You do get a heavier top plate in the Alva TTV2 as it's six millimeters thick. These two do look the same as the SE has the aluminum wrap around the sides, but if you look at it where it hits the motor cutout, you can see it's a little bit thinner, but still very heavy. While the Alva TTV2 is a direct drive, the ST is a belt drive unit like most high performance turntables. The motor is isolated from the plinth at three points and is not touching the aluminum top plate. The bearing for the platter also sits in an isolation weld that is attached to the top of the plinth. The one piece platter is die cast aluminum. When I first picked it up, I thought, boy, this is a bit light. But then I opened up the mat, which is very heavy, and when you couple the mat to the platter, the combination is very dead. When you tap the outer edge of the platter with the mat yield, just you hear no noise or vibration at all. Controlling the speed of a belt drive motor is very important, and Cambridge Audio uses their decades of electronic experience to come up with a great speed regulation system. I asked for more details on it, but they were pretty quiet about the tech they were using to do this. Both the Alva ST and the TTV2 have an identical tone arm. It has a detachable head shell, which will make it very easy for those of you who like to play around with two cartridges or have an inexpensive one for records in rough shape or even a mono cartridge for mono recordings. I do wish the arm had adjustable height, so you had a larger range of other cartridges to choose from. 
The Alva ST uses a very popular Audio-Technica moving magnet cartridge, the ATVM95. One thing pretty neat about this series of cartridges is similar to something Ortofon offers. The replacement stylus for the more expensive and better models fit the ATVM95. So you can upgrade to a better stylus tip when it's time for replacement. As a matter of fact, you get a microline tip for about 150 bucks later on. One advantage of the Alva ST is that it has a very good built-in moving magnet phono preamp. In a lot of cases, when these are built in, they're just an afterthought. However, Cambridge Audio has won all kinds of awards for their separate solo and duo phono preamps. The one built into the Alva ST is based upon the more expensive duo. This allows you to send a high-level signal out to your system without needing another set of cables and a good phono preamp. We suspect this alone is saving you at least $200 or more in parts costs, not having to buy the phono preamp or the better cables. Should you wish to upgrade to a better phono cartridge, you'll be able to choose from a large variety of moving magnets on the market as long as they're about the same height as the AT cartridge included. Cambridge came up with the saying, just add vinyl with the original Alva TT. The idea was you could easily get the sound from the turntable into any system. With so many people using Bluetooth speakers or just Bluetooth headphones, Cambridge wanted users to be able to access vinyl even via Bluetooth. You may have heard of Bluetooth, but you may not know there are several ways that it can be implemented from very compressed to not much compression at all. Cambridge Audio, of course, chose the best one, which is Bluetooth Adapt X HD. This method streams Bluetooth at high res 24 bit 48 kilohertz. Adapt X HD is much less lossy than the other schemes. It is still not as good as the physical connection, but it's as close you can get using Bluetooth. For those of you with a more purist mindset, you can totally defeat all the Bluetooth circuitry with a flip of a switch. You can also defeat the built-in phono preamp as well should you want to maybe add a moving coil cartridge and get one capable of handing that type of cartridge later. The Alva ST is pretty basic to set up. They have some little pieces of plastic under the belt to help you grab it to slip over the motor, but I found if I use these, it was easy to twist it. I kind of recommend just pulling that off and using your clean hands, wash your hands first, and then use your fingers to get the belt over the motor pulley. I've got a whole video on how we do this that you can watch when you get one. The Alva ST comes with an Ortofon stylus pressure gauge too. You can use this to set the tracking force, but I found even though the counterweight has no numbers on it, the large lines indicate half a gram, so four large lines after I zeroed it out got us to two grams, which I confirmed with the gauge. The table does weigh quite a bit, so I suggest you start out by connecting up the audio cables and power supply first, then spinning it back around for the rest of the setup. I decided to test the Alva ST the exact same system I tested the Alva TTV2 in. This system has a Macintosh C22 preamp, which has a really good built-in phono preamp. When I did the comparison, the Alva TT, I heard better separation instruments, clarity, and deep bass using the one in the C22, but this time I never even got that far. I pulled out a Tom Petty album, and just after a few seconds, this turntable grabbed my attention. It had me tapping my toes and really getting into the music. It reminded me of the first time I tested a Cambridge Audio integrated amp and was super impressed with the sound and how engaging it was. The Alva ST has that magical quality I hear in a lot of good turntables that just draws you into the music and make you forget about critically listening while you relax and smile at great sound. Obviously, a $69 Audio-Technica moving magnet cartridge does not extract as much detail as the Alva MC on the Alva TTV2, nor does it track as well or have the bass capabilities, but the sound you get from the Alva ST is very compelling and just does nothing wrong. It's really quite good. I also tested turning Bluetooth on and off and might have tricked myself into thinking I heard an improvement, but I'm not sure I heard any difference at all with it on or off. If you're going to connect the Alva ST using Bluetooth, bear in mind that it is like all other units like this where there's no visual system to decide what to connect to. The only way I was able to get it connected to my Sony Bluetooth headphones was to turn off every single other Bluetooth device in my house, as it will just grab the first one it sees otherwise. And I got the same results comparing the sound through the Bluetooth headphones using Bluetooth or hardwired as I did with Alva TTV2. It was not bad, but with an edge and a little bit less dynamics than the hardwired headphone connection. At half the price of the Alva TTV2, the Alva ST is going to appeal to a lot of people. It comes with a great phono preamp, is incredibly well built, and as a cartridge you can upgrade the sound by simply replacing the stylus, and you can go as far as a microline stylus tip for a very reasonable 150 bucks at this time. And if you ever want to use Bluetooth, that is the best type of Bluetooth ready to go. 
Think of roaming around your house with Bluetooth headphones on while enjoying your favorite records. Heck, it's almost the same table as the Alva TT V2 without the cartridge. I thought the Alva TT V2 was a pretty good value, but the Alva ST is without question a great value. It's simple to set up, has a very cool appearance, and will have you smiling to the music as soon as you drop the stylus. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be sure you don't miss any of our content. Also, check out the playlist section of our channel to find any content you may be looking for. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call, chat with us on audioadvice.com, or stop by one of our award-winning showrooms. We'd be happy to help. We'll see you next time.